Hi guys and welcome to De Costa Art Design, a creative guide to the galaxy. <laughs> Being a Star Wars fan, I had to throw a galaxy there somewhere, didn't I? Right, this video is about more about me trying to get my creative mojo back and some of the things I've learned along the way and me wanting to share that. I kind of need to get myself out of the box that I find myself in. I don't know if you've been there as an artist. Life happens, things get in the way. You just kind of get clogged up with life. It's hard to get in that creative space again. So I find for me, I need to do something different and challenge myself to reignite what I once had and the rest kind of roll back into whatever the new creative project that I've decided to embark on. So I picked up this Atelieri model kit which I'm going to convert to radio control but there's a few things that I wasn't happy with and I need to make changes to to adapt it so instead of me paying a ridiculous amount of, of cash I thought why not invest the money in getting a 3d printer so I went for a resin 3d printer because I needed the detail the details are important to me because obviously this is a scale model kit and I want it to look good and I need precision so I went for the, for the Elegoo Saturn 8k and this is what I'll be using for my journey back so this is going to help catapult me out of the current creative block that I found myself in and I really want to share the journey with you so without further ado let's get into this Welcome to my creative space, which I've not long finished doing. It was in a bit of a mess when I started 3D printing, but i um, done a bit of work and managed to squeeze it all in there and drag it from my workshop. I've just picked up this spray booth, which I'll be doing an unboxing, so be sure to check that video out. I've got my resin inks over here and acrylics for various applications. Over to the right of that, we've got our, some more paint stuff and primers, finishers, additives. And I actually don't have enough storage. I went for the Elegoo Saturn 8K along with the Elegoo Mercury XS bundle. You're going to want to make sure you've got adequate space for all of your equipment. This is on a 6x2 foldable table that I picked up on eBay. Pretty cheap, around £30, and it does the job. I'm using my, my daughter's old wardrobe here, <laughs> where I'm storing all the resins and bits and pieces. Something that I didn't consider is somewhere to put these models once you finish printing them because if you're going to paint them, they're going to collect dust unless you're going to cover them up. So I've stuck them in this drawer down here and just separated everything out with some bubble wrap to protect it. You know, this, this stuff is brittle, depending on what you're using, what mixes you got, what resins you're using, but it's pretty brittle and you don't want to be breaking these delicate parts. Yeah, so I've got some more models at the top. I keep my FEP safely stored at the back there. My kitchen towels, my resins of course over here. You want to keep them stored in a dark place so this is the best place for them. And my filters I keep in a bag as well. You don't want your filters getting contaminated. Alright, first things first, let's consider our health when we're embarking on this journey. Being that I'm printing indoors, I'm going to require another layer of protection for me and my family. I picked up a couple of air purifiers. The first one, not so good. The second air purifier that I picked up is in a totally different league. Not all of them are created equal. And unless they have active carbon filters and are clearly advertised to greatly reduce the VOCs. I keep saying VOCs like you guys know what it is, but if you don't know what they are, they're volatile organic compounds. And if they don't greatly reduce those VOCs then don't waste your money. Now just because the studies are pretty vague when it comes to the long-term effects of being exposed to these uh, resins that we love to work with that doesn't mean I'm going to run the risk of just being lapsy-daisy when it comes to handling this stuff. 
First thing to throw in your shopping basket is you're gonna want some nitro gloves. Good quality, chemical resistant gloves. I've got the disposable type as well. Um, these are really handy for a clean up. Um, the, the thicker ones, not so much so, the better for removing things from your bill plate and dipping your hands in that isopropyl. Next up we have our mask. Uh, a mask does come with the printer, but it's a dust mask and it's not gonna keep those VOCs and gases from your nostrils. I've got my mask that I use for airbrushing. That's what I'll be using. You gotta make sure you're using the right filters and they're color coded. You know, make sure you know what you're buying and check the sell by date on these things as well. These filters won't last forever. So be mindful of that. You might need a few packs. Thankfully, I've got a few vents. I've got the one on the wall and the one on the window, which is great. I can also open the window if I want to. I've got my carbon filters, two extra that I brought to go alongside the one that comes with the Elegoo Saturn 8K. This is the first air purifier that I brought. power button, your ionizer, um, your fan speeds and so forth and your timing. Uh, and I bought it because it was cheap, but it doesn't do the job. This is the one that I picked up recently and I've, I've got an unboxing of this and I'll be doing a review on it as well. So be sure to check that out. That'll be coming up soon. But yeah, great, responsive, touch control. It's got an indicator on it to tell you if you're in the red zone, if the air quality is really bad. Um, and mine's always in the green, which is good. I need to test it out when I'm actually running a print and when I'm working to see if that actually goes into the amber zone or red. It'll be interesting to see that. Check that video out, that will be coming up shortly. Pick yourself up a couple of plastic storage organizers. You'll need two brushes for cleanup. I use a softer brush for cleaning my more detailed models, but so you don't want to break off. And the large brush I use for cleaning my bill plate and all of my tools. I use three mats. I've got one slap mat and, and I put a, a baking silicone mat underneath the printer because when you're taking your prints out undoubtedly you're going to be dropping resin all over the place and the other one's a modeling one but yeah it's still silicon so i recommend three mats guys you're going to want some flush side precision pliers and you'll need these to separate your supports from your model I highly recommend a couple of squeegees for cleaning your FEP film. You're gonna need a hobby knife with, with just to clean up your prints. <music> 10 liters of isopropyl is a great starting point, but I also recommend picking up a one liter bottle such as this. If you look at the bore, the opening of the bottle, you notice how tiny that is, but it's great for cleaning up. Great for the FEP, great for spraying all over your tools. Um, and it comes out as a jet, which is really handy. Great to have on your workbench. You want an airbrush or a hair dryer to dry off that isopropyl before you put it in your UV Cura. Get yourself a funnel dedicated to emptying out your vat back into your resin bottles. You'll need 190 micron paint strainers or filters. I went for the pack 100. You're gonna use a lot of these. Let's not forget our resins. There's so much to choose from. You've got your Anacubics, Soraya Tech, and Eligu. Yeah, you name it. There's, there's so much to choose from. 
might recommend picking up a new USB. I got a low profile one here because I heard there was concerns about things knocking up against it. I didn't want to run the risk of, of losing important data. Next up, these handles, really handy. <laughs> Excuse the pun. They are little suction cup handles, easy to remove, and they're really strong. You think they're gonna come loose, but they, they, they do not budge unless you unlock them. Glass cleaner, foam glass cleaner, I found on a, on a forum somewhere, somebody recommended this particular brand, but I don't, I'm not sure it really matters what brand it is, as long as it's a foam glass cleaner. Um, 750 mil, I've got three cans of this. And it, it goes a really long way. You know, I'm st that's still can number one. You will need a scraper in order to remove your prints from the build plate. Now I was using these plastic things and take my advice, absolutely useless. Look at the state of them. The The build plate itself is actually, it's quite coarse, so they don't work. I advise you use the scraper that comes with the printer. My one came with one, but I didn't want to scratch up the build plate. So I thought I'll get the plastic ones, but not a good idea. This works great. I actually saw one of these in the, in the pound shop. So it's got a little taper at the end to get right underneath your your prints. So I recommend getting one of these. FEP release film liner. Now I got the 2.0, which is supposed to be an improved version of the original FEP that comes with the Elegoo Saturn. But either which way, you want to check your measurements. Make sure you've got the right FEP for your resin tank. Now the 2.0 release liner claims that it lasts 50% longer than the original. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But when I changed my FEP, I noticed the difference straight off. It's not cheap, but I highly recommend picking up some spares. They come really neatly packed in this secure box. Very solid, padded, so you know your sheets are well protected. You're gonna need some microfiber cloths. I use these for cleaning my FEP and my LCD screen. So I use different colors at, at particular stages of my cleaning process. You wanna pick up a couple of digital thermometers. I've got the room temperature gauge, which is great. It checks humidity and so forth. And I picked this up a little while ago, which has been a lifesaver and enables me to check the temperature of my resin to make sure it's at the optimal temperature for printing. Honestly, couldn't do without this. Um, you leave your resin in hot water for a few minutes, dip that in, tells you the temperature, you're good to go. The unit itself costs around £50 to make, which isn't much at all. It's a bit of a pain to put together, but once you get in the groove, it comes together nicely. I will leave a link in the description to the video I followed. Though I can't take the credit for this unit, I have put together a video of how it all goes together. So be sure to check that video out. To create a constant room temperature, I picked up this 3D printer enclosure. Make sure you check your measurements on this one. They're all pretty big. The resin printer fits inside, blow some heat into it, and it should maintain an ambient temperature. And last but not least, the amazing, the incredible, the must have for any 3D printing project, the resin 3D printing logbook and journal. Can't recommend it enough. It's a great idea. It's got some useful tips and tricks in it. Really good for jotting down particulars when it comes to your different SDLs, print settings and certain other variables. I mean, you could use a bit of paper, but this is hardware and it's a hardback book. You've got the paperback version, but I went for the hardback because it's gonna be in my print area and if there's any spills on it, this is going to last a lot.
lot longer. Yeah, highly recommend it. Not just because I published it, but it's a really good idea. There's the FDM version as well. Here we are. That's the FDM version. I'm actually going to be picking up my F. DM printer in the new year get, getting a new one i can't wait for that um so yeah pick these up there's a link in the description it takes you off to amazon you see these great highly recommend it there's loads of other books out there that are similar that are log books and say they're journals but they're just covers with printed lines in them this you've got your settings and you've got tips and tricks catered to your particular type of printing so go and pick yourself up a copy you won't be disappointed so that brings us to the end of our video that's that's a wrap guys everything you need to put in your shopping basket for christmas or you know you're getting yourself a little birthday gift or you're just getting yourself a gift and you want to get into 3d printing these are all the bits and pieces that i think that you'll need to get yourself up and running you could leave bits out for it if you want you're perfectly fine to do that but i'm pretty certain you'll come round to picking up every item that i've mentioned in this video um i try to avoid a lot of them <laughs> you just can't when you want to do the job properly this galaxy's huge <laughs>